Good day, everyone. Meteorologist Mark Molnar here. How's everybody getting along? Well, thank you for joining me for this edition of Media Marks Weather Eastern and Weather Northeastern. Yes, we have a lot to talk about. Everything here from severe weather to this big trough. Well, how long is this trough going to hang out in the east? And how is that going to affect our severe weather pattern as we go forward here? Well, we're going to see some several bouts of severe weather. One actually on Wednesday, I think a pretty good tornado threat in parts of Texas here. And as this vigorous area of low pressure continues to carve out across the east, look at what we got going on here. This is actually as we head towards the weekend. Yeah, there's going to be a reinforcing shot of colder air. Look at this. This is just going to be unseasonable here across the eastern part of the country. And that's just going to hang out as we head into all the way through mid-May. And I'll tell you here, there is going to be some major thunderstorms across parts of Texas here as we go into Wednesday. Take a look at that future radar. I'm going to be going into the detail. All that with you here in this segment. And look at this up here in the northeast for your Wednesday. There is actually convection elements coming into play as we see another upper level low pinwheel around here with a trough of low pressure. And across parts of the south, we'll be looking at rainfall totals approaching that three to as much as five inches. But look it up here into the northeast as we head towards the weekend. There could be some areas getting a tremendous amount of rain here. And I'll break down all the details on who could see the heaviest rain. All right, so we're taking a look at your Wednesday severe weather. Look at this here across northern Texas and northeast Texas. We're looking at an enhanced variety of severe weather here across the Dallas-Fort Worth area, extending southwest and eastward as well. And look at this over here in Florida. We have another area in central Florida. We're going to be looking at damaging wind large hail, but it's over here into parts of Texas. I think this is where we see the greatest risk of some tornadoes. And if you take a look day three, Towards your Thursday, we are going to be looking at a uh, basically a, a marginal risk here across parts of the Gulf Coast, New Orleans, all the way up into parts of the rest of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. All right, so taking a look at your surface base cape here for your Wednesday, this is where things really get cranking. This is right around 8 p.m. on Wednesday. Look at this across parts of Texas. You are essentially looking at cape values close to 4,000 joules per kilogram here into the red zone. So if you're in these areas, please, please heed those warnings and watches and advisories here. And that slips to the south here as we head towards Thursday, towards New Orleans. And SIGTOR parameters, significant tornado parameter here. Here is, this is right around 9 a.m. on Wednesday morning. So this pivots from West Central Texas towards Abilene and watch these SIGTOR parameters just blossom. There's going to be a very narrow area right around and just south of Dallas-Fort Worth area, but we start to get two to three on the SIGTOR scale here, here, and look at this towards Waco. Yeah, so you do, you do start to approach four on the red zones of the SIGTOR parameters. So it's Wednesday evening, we have to watch out for the most significant tornadic development. All right, so ARRR Future Radar, as we go into the overnight hours here, take a look at North Texas. We are going to be looking at several complexes of thunderstorms. This is by 7 a.m. on Wednesday, the 26th. A look at what is going on here. We've got an explosion of thunderstorms. I'll tell you, if you live across North Central Texas and Northeast Texas here, you're going to be looking at a tremendous amount of severe weather on your Wednesday. And look at that. The morning one moves into northeast Texas, but it's this one in the afternoon up by Wichita Falls. Take a look at this here. You got a tremendous amount of severe weather. There's going to be some supercells in nature here. Take a look at that. Yeah, and then as we go towards 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m., this is where things get really ugly, and I think it's right around 9 or 10 p.m. This is where we could see those nocturnal tornadoes and extreme hail here. There's going to be, you know, the potential for uh, anywhere from golf ball to tennis ball sized hail here. So this is going to be a tremendous system as it tracks across parts of Texas here. So if you're in these areas, please heed the wa watches and warnings that go into effect. And, you know, this is going to become a damaging straight line wind event here as we go into 2 a.m., on your Thursday, look at that. Across eastern Texas, there could be a tremendous amount of wind damage as we go into parts of Louisiana as well. Look at this heading towards uh, Alexandria here, Monroe, and all the way through Shreveport at there at that time. And then as we get over here into parts of southern Mississippi and southeastern Louisiana, New Orleans, you are going to be under the gun for some really severe weather. And then as we get into the day on Thursday, look at this, 2 p.m., 
Yeah, that complex heads to the east here. We have this whole big old line here across the south that we're going to have to watch out for. Now, I wanted to show you here into the northeast as we get into your Wednesday. Look what is coming in here. Yes, we have the chance of showers and even some thunder showers. There might even be some of those, you know little hail mixed in here. Look at this. This is by 2 p.m. on Wednesday. We could actually have some convective elements in nature here. Take a look at this. It's looking pretty crazy across this area as we get into the 4 p.m. time frame. I-81 corridor eastward up towards I-88. Parts of the New York State Thruway towards it Utica here. Look at this. Yeah, we could see some quite some heavy rain. Maybe some hailstone mixed in here. Look at that. That becomes a pretty solid line. This could be quite interesting. You know, we're not looking at any tremendous severe weather here, but look at this. You you know there's going to be wind gusts of 40, maybe 50 miles per hour, and some small hailstones out of this as we head towards the Hudson Valley. Um, Let's get a time stamp on that. That's right around 7 p.m. So, you know, just after dinner time here, you could be looking at some problems. And, you know, that continues to move into New England. It kind of washes out. But you still have some heavier showers as you move into 9 8, 9 Oh, this is actually overnight into Thursday morning. So, yeah, it takes a long time. Look at that. Let's just back it up there. So, all night long, it's moving into the New England area. And then it gets the daytime heating towards Boston and flares up some of those heavier showers and thunder showers. All right. So, across the south here, picking up where we left off. Look at this. This is the NAM 3 kilometer. This is going to continue towards the Florida area. And I wanted to show you this because we're going to have some severe weather developments here into Florida on Thursday. Look at these supercells around the Orlando area, maybe even further southward here into Florida. And look at those. Those continue to blow up and move to the northeast by Thursday night. All right, so let's take a look at synoptic view here. We're going to take you through where we were on the mesoscale models. So let's just back this up here so we can get all the frames in. Yeah, so this is what we're going to be looking at during the next several days. So yeah, this system moves to the east coast. Look at this. This is by the 28th. So we're looking at right around Friday. You know, we're going to be looking at some heavy rain coming up here into parts of the mid-Atlantic and to the northeast. So yeah, some showers and thunderstorms will be likely. That moves off the coast for your 29th, which is actually Saturday. So, you know, we'll have some residual showers up here into the northeast and then our next system here across parts of the southern plains. And look at that. Yeah, we're just going to continue this pattern where we pinwheel these systems across the south and the Great Lakes. So there's kind of like... It almost looks like two jet streams, even though we technically don't, you know, this time of year. But, you know, it is feeling like more like a wintry pattern here. And look at that. May 1st, we get some heavy rain up here again into parts of the northeast. That kicks off to the northeast for your May 3rd, May 4th. But the big common theme here is to have these storms come out of the Great Lakes Midwest and out of the south here. And we're going to have a rainier period of time here into parts of the northeast as we go through May. And look at that. Yeah, this looks like a nor'easter type situation here towards May 4th. Yeah, this is what uh, many of you wanted for the winter time for snow, but it's actually happening here in the springtime and it's not going to be snow. Many of you are, were asking me questions. Are we actually going to see any snow out of this? It's not likely. Maybe one of these could clip some of the higher elevations, but at this time, I'm not expecting, you know, massive cold air, you know, I have a higher sun angle this time of year, you know, it can happen, but, you know, I just don't think the air mass is cold enough. It's cool, but it's not cold enough by any stretch of the imagination here, and as we go through towards May 11th here, it does start to look a little quieter across the east. So if we take a look at the upper air pattern here pretty quickly, I could sum it up for you pretty quickly here. You can see that trough across the east. Look at this. Most of you probably are aware of this. This looks more like a wintry pattern here with blocking up towards Greenland. A massive ridge out west, and look at this trough continuing in the east as we head towards the 29th of April here. And look at this as we head right just in time for May 1st. Look at this massive trough digging across the east, and that's just going to dig in even deeper as we head throughout the first week of May. And the other thing we're going to be keeping an eye on here is frosts and freezes. Yeah, I can't believe, you know, we have to talk about that this time of year. But look what's going on here into the northeast as we head into your Wednesday morning. There may be a, look at this, cold air here. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of freezing and frost, you know, downwind of the lakes here as well. Please watch out. If you have anything growing, you might want to bring it in or cover it up. And look at that as we head throughout the deeper into the morning hours of 
Wednesday or Thursday morning. Look at this. It actually gets colder here across parts of the northeast behind that trough. So, yeah, watch out for that. It, it's These overnight lows are going to be cold enough. You know, daytime highs, mainly upper 40s, low 50s. But, yeah, you do get these periods uh, in the night and early morning where you could approach or drop below freezing. So just be mindful of that. All right, so King Euro here. Let's take a look at King Euro. You know about that storm here down across Texas. The European model really showing it blasting up here Wednesday afternoon and evening into the overnight Thursday. Look at that. Crossing along the Gulf Coast. Let's just back this up a little bit. There's that system in the northeast, so you do get that flare-up. European models showing a little bit of mixed precipitation. That's what that is, those hailstones that could be caking in as well. But there it is, you know, as we head throughout Friday. There's that area of low pressure heading towards the Ohio Valley here on the surface, and you can see it brings a big old slug of moisture. Initially, we have high pressure in the northeast. Wouldn't that be great if that could just hold on? But it's not. Look at this. Saturday morning, Friday night into Saturday morning, that heads into the northeast, bringing some rain with it. Look at that. And then you can start to see evidence of a development of a new low along the coast. This is so wintry, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. So it's it's kind of it doesn't close off completely by Sunday here, but look what starts to happen. You have these series of upper level lows pinwheeling along the east side of this trough. Here's some severe weather continuing and heavy rains across parts of Florida. And look at this as we head towards Monday. This is where things could get cranking. So some of these thunderstorms in Florida Sunday, they give rise to this low pressure that could make a run up the East Coast and really affect parts of New England here. Look at this with some real heavy rain into your Monday night, Tuesday morning. And do I dare say it, there's actually some wet snowflakes mixing in as far south as western New York and northwestern Pennsylvania for Tuesday morning into Tuesday afternoon. So definitely have to keep an eye on that. It definitely stays very unsettled in the northeast with another potential coastal low developing by Thursday, May 4th here. Look at this. This is very wintry pattern. That one heading Kind of out to sea, but it still could clip parts of New England. All right, so your total liquid equivalent precipitation here. Which areas are going to be under the gun for potential flooding as we head through the weekend? Look at this. Yeah, you're going to be looking at tremendous amounts of rain here down south. So please, with these thunderstorms, some of these areas could approach two to as much as four inches and locally higher towards that five inch mark. So if you get any flash flood warnings, or advisories or whatever watches please heed them we're actually going to get some rain up here into the northeast as well look at this yeah we're going to be looking at rainfall totals on the order of three quarters to one and one half inches in many areas and as we head into next week look at that that's pretty significant there. All right, so total liquid equivalent precipitation here on the GFS. It goes crazy across the south, and look at this. Some areas of the northeast could be problematic as well. This is a little troubling because, look, this is a large area of four to six inches. Even up here in the parts of interior upstate New York and Pennsylvania, the GFS is a bit farther west on the heaviest axis of precipitation than the European model is. Wanted to show you the northeast here, liquid precipitation amounts with that system on Wednesday. There it is. Anywhere around a quarter of an inch on average from Cleveland all the way to Boston, Binghamton, and Burlington. Look at that. Yeah, and a little bit higher up here into northern New England. Now, as we approach, here's the system that starts to move in Friday. Look at that. Yeah, you're going to see up to an inch of rain around Cleveland, Akron, Cincinnati, and that is going to spread to the northeast here for Saturday. Yeah, I know, just in time for Saturday here, the European model is a little bit slower with this system than the GFS is. So, yeah, bring some showers in pretty much all weekend. And, oh, wow, hold on, let's back up here. This is pretty interesting because, you know, this takes us through Monday morning. So most areas will see an inch to an inch and a quarter. Look at this, eastern Ohio. Yeah, you're going to see up close to two inches, according to the European model here. Some areas into parts of New England as well, and the Mid-Atlantic here up towards two inches. But here's where things get interesting. This is more like with this nor'easter uh, towards the early to mid part of next week. Look at this. Yeah, we have plenty of time to watch it, and this adds on top it back here across the Ohio Valley and the Allegheny. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. You know, if we start keep getting these heavy rains across the Northeast, we could start to have issues with some minor flooding. 
And here it is on the GFS as we put this into motion. There's that first shot of rainfall pretty well lining up with the European model. There's the second wave as we had late Friday night into Saturday. And here is that potential coastal. Look what the GFS does. Yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on this because the GFS is much further west on this than the European model is. So that, it, you know, the European is way over here with the, you know, four to five inches. And the GFS is actually across parts of upstate New York and north central Pennsylvania with close to five inches. All right. And taking a look at his photo, John sending it in from Brooklyn Beckham Street, 64 degrees in Islip, New York. April 25th, 2023. Look at that beautiful sky, 64 degrees. Not too bad. You know, most areas of the Northeast are being held down into the 50s, but it's nice that actually you, you're actually getting to those mid 60s. Nice capture there as the sun's coming out, John. All right, tropics across the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico, Atlantic. How's everybody doing here in the Caribbean? Still enjoying that nice lower humidity. It is creeping up though. I don't, you know, we have to watch, you know, parts of the Gulf here, the Southeast Coast. We do have to watch this time of year because we can get some flare-ups. But at this time, you know, as we go through the first part of May, I really don't see anything developing at this time. And as we go out here into the Western Pacific, how's everybody doing from the Philippines, China, Japan, and everywhere all the way to Vietnam here. Well, you know what? It's been really dry. And I did want to alert you by the 29th, we get towards the end of the month here, we have a tropical wave that may start to approach the southern Philippines here. But it's not going to be anything by any stretch of the imagination. Japan, you're not ready for your typhoon season yet. But you can see there is the intertropical convergence zone kind of spinning up out here. And as we continue in time, let's take a look and see what we got going on. So as we head into May here, May 1st, May 2nd, May 3rd, yeah, there doesn't appear... I mean, it is looking interesting out here. These systems, these tropical waves, some of them might try to develop into something as we head towards mid-May. But you know what? I have to say, uh, going back in history so far, this has been a, a pretty quiet start here. So if we take a look at temperatures here, here is your daytime highs for your Wednesday. So yeah... Look at the temperature difference here from Oklahoma to Texas, 50s versus 80s. That's why the severe weather, you have this demarcation zone here versus heavy rain to the north and just really stormy uh, to the south here. Here's that cold air here across the Great Lakes. You're mainly in the 50s into Thursday. You do have a little bit of a surge of warmer air ahead of this next low pressure system, but it's going to be short lived. Look at Florida just baking here into the mid to upper 80s, near 90 in many locations. It is baking out west too. Look at that 80s and 90s all the way up the west coast here. That's crazy. But look at this cold air here across the northern plains and parts of the east here. It is cooler than average to say the least here into your Saturday. Look at this. Yeah. We're looking at uh, clouds and rain holding temperatures mostly into the 50s here across parts of the northeast. And watch here as we head into Sunday with this reinforcing shot of cold air here into the 40s and low 50s here across the lakes. Watch where that heads. That heads towards the northeast. We start to erode those 60s in favor of more 50 degree weather. Thanks for joining me for this edition of Media Mark's Weather Northeastern and Weather Eastern. Don't forget Facebook Media Mark, Weather Northeastern, also Hurricane Northeastern, at Susquehanna Weather for my local page, and guess what? MediaMark.com, WeatherNortheastern.com is Twitter, at Weather Eastern. Don't forget, question or comment down below, smash that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell button, share the video, and thanks for joining me.